Okay, so welcome to the Brantford Cultural Advisory Committee. Um, so we will get started. We are going to have to start with elections of the chair and vice chair. So I'm looking for nominations. I nominate Brantford's town crier, David McKee, to be chair of this committee. Do we have a seconder for that? Sure. Um, can I make a counter nomination? <laughs> <laughs> are there any other nominations? <laughs> I don't know. I'll... Yeah, I'll, I'll accept to be a nominee, but I'd like to make a nomination myself. Um, Lorna, would you be willing to stand for office? No. How about you, Vern? No, I've had my time, but I would suggest Tara. Ah, uh, where's Tara? Oh, well, there we are. <laughs> yeah, that's a good suggestion, too. Can we have a, should I nominate you, Sarah? Or, oh, no, you're, are you Tara. nominated, Vern? Yeah. Uh, care, yeah. Care. Care. <laughs> so, They're writing. There's I'm, so many of us. I'm, I'm Kara. You're Kara. And Sarah's <laughs> normally here, so it makes sense. Yeah. So I'll, I'll second that motion. All right. Are there any other nominations? All right. So we will have to do a vote. So I'll start with David. So all those in favor of David being elected as chair, everyone has to vote. <laughs> can't vote twice. I don't want to vote for me. choices. Oh. Uh, looks like the yay's have Looks it. like that's anonymous. <laughs> anonymous? Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> All right, so we will do the same for vice chair. Do you have any nominations for vice I chair? I nominate Tara. <laughs> All second. Second. Oh, any other nominations? Let's go with it. All right, so Tara, you are acclaimed as vice chair. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. All right, so David, you have the roadmap in front of you. If you yeah. want to follow along with that. It's yeah. almost like <laughs> so Brantford, I don't even have a gap. Um the Brantford uh, Cultural Advisory Committee is now called to order and uh, go over some rules of procedure. Everybody got this email? It's got all the thing with the, all the yellow thing lines in. <laughs> That's interesting. You must have spent a long time with your record doing that. Uh, anyway. um, sorry, before you go, for any of the Brantford panelists that are still unnamed, if you mind renaming yourself, I saw a couple come on late. So I just want to make sure we have everyone listed here. Just right click on uh, your name. I just want to make sure we're all here. Oh, perfect. Okay. We all here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Jennifer's all there. <laughs> um, this meeting is going to be held in a hybrid uh, format in accordance with the electronic participation policy for virtual meetings. It's the first time I've run into one of this particular type of thing. I've had some interesting virtual meetings with other committees, but it has nothing to do with this sort of thing. This is quite interesting. Uh, full corporate policy 050 regarding electronic virtual meetings is available online if you want to review it. The staff and delegates are reminded to keep their video and microphones off until requested by the chair or members of the committee. All cameras for committee members shall remain on to ensure quorum. Got that? <laughs> Um, members of the committee that shall indicate they wish to speak by physically raising their hand. Members who are present in person will be given the opportunity to speak first, followed by virtual participants. Um, all members of the committee will vote by a physical show of hands. Please leave your hand raised until the chair has determined the result of the vote. The, in the event a connection or slash service interruption occurs that affects quorum, we may recess the meeting for up to 15 minutes to regain quorum. If quorum is not achieved, the meeting will be adjourned. All rules for delegations under the city's procedural bylaw continue to apply. So have we taken the roll call? I, um, we... I just saw a couple more Brantford panelists join. If you could please rename yourself um, just for roll, roll call. It's really tiny up there. I... These 77 year old eyes don't want to read that stuff that's that small. Oh, perfect. There's Anna, and there's another one. I don't know if that's me. Uh, is Neha here? Oh, perfect. Okay. You got yes. everybody? Yep. All right. Um, are there any declarations of conflict, uh, conflict of interest? 
uh, for any of the items listed on the agenda. Anybody? No declarations of conflict. We will proceed to number four. Um, there are no presentations or delegations, so we can proceed to number five. The items for consideration. There is one item uh, for consideration on today's, today's agenda, and that will require a lot of reading. I thought that was really interesting. Um, it's the THB, th yeah, THB uh, Bridge Public Art Proposal and 2022-426. Uh, um, so to begin, I will ask Laura Almeida and Gagan uh, Batra to come forward and provide a review of the TH and uh, the Bridge Public Art proposal. Um, so, are they ready to talk? Yep, we're ready. Hi, can everybody hear us? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Gagan Batra, the Manager of Business Support and Sustainability in the Public Works Commission, and I have Laura Almeida here, who is the Policy and Program Support Analyst. Uh, we're going to present to you today a proposal for th &B Crossing Bridge um, that has been developed to help curb some of the graffiti that we've been seeing and help to rehabilitate that bridge. So uh, we'll be happy to take any questions later. I'll just pass it off to Laura to give some more information about the proposal. Thank you, Gagan. Um, yeah, so to address and prevent graffiti around Brantford's vibrant trail network, the city is proposing a collaborative community public art project at th &B Crossing Bridge. We are proposing to bring together local organizations, community groups, and individuals <laughs> to paint and revitalize this important connection in Brantford's trail network. So the issue that we've defined at this point is that in recent years, th &B Crossing Bridge has been subject to extensive vandalism. This is inclusive of inappropriate graffiti that does not align with the values of the city. The solution that we're proposing is to provide opportunities for public art. This approach is recognized by many communities as a best practice, as it adds uniqueness, it tells local stories, and installs a sense of pride and ownership over these public spaces. If successful in preventing future vandalism, this local pilot project can be used as a larger scale strategy throughout other parts of the trail network and even throughout the city as a whole. As for the steps that we've already taken, in April of this year, city staff had the inner panels of the bridge painted to cover existing graffiti. These panels are currently a solid rust color. City staff will also ensure that these panels are touched up again prior to uh, public painting if required. The specific details of the project uh, we are proposing is that there are 112 bridge panels total available for painting. These panels are 4.4 feet tall, and they vary in width between seven and eight feet. We propose to invite community members to submit a rough draft and a description of their ideas through an online or paper application form, and they can cover between one to five panels. We will prioritize designs that incorporate multiple panels into a larger cohesive piece, so up to five and all submissions would be subject to the city's public art policy and the murals guideline in section C of the signs bylaw. All submissions will be screened and selected by a team of staff from economic development and tourism, parks, and the business support and sustainability office. Submissions will be approved based on the artist's self-described alignment with one or more of the following themes, and that include uh, Brantford's history, local culture, people, events, and locations. A schedule of painting can then be prepared by staff to ensure uh, that supplies are available and that folks are able to get in and paint at appropriate times. Staff will also monitor the progress of the painting to ensure that the designs are being followed as submitted. For up to five years following the painting, City Park staff will monitor the bridge to help curb vandalism of the artwork, reaching out to participants if any touch-ups or alterations to their work are required. Participants will be encouraged to look after the appearance of their own artwork, but if the original painter cannot be reached, staff will make any touch-ups or alterations as needed. And efforts will be made to retain the original imagery, but there really is no way to guarantee uh, longevity of the original design without the involvement of the original painter. So we are really hopeful that this project can take place this year. 
and we are proposing the following timeline. So back in May, uh, back in May on May 24th, the project was pitched to the Public Art Subcommittee with the endorsed recommendation that the TH and B Crossing Public Art Project proceed. And today, June 21st, the project is being pitched to the Brantford Cultural Advisory Committee. And on June 5th, the project will be presented to the Committee of the Whole Operations. And to receive final approval and go ahead, we would present to City Council on July 26th. If approved, the public art submission campaign would commence early August and selected uh, projects would be invited to paint their panels throughout August and September, weather permitting. This project will be funded through the Public Works Minor Capital Account. We will also cover the costs of the ongoing maintenance of the bridge panels, including uh, remediating new graffiti. So no funding is being requested from the Public Art Reserve or Tourism's Public Art maintenance operating budget. As for the uh, estimated cost, it is estimated to cost between um, $15,500 and $19,500. And the breakdown of these costs is as follows. So we're looking at about $2,500 for the pre-painting of the bridge panels, $10,000 for paint and other supplies. So this could include a variety of primary colors, brushes, mixing cups, etc. We're looking at $2,000 for the public art submission campaign to encourage community participation, and at least $1,000 for annual maintenance, kind of roughly scheduled for five years after the initial painting. The recommendations that we're making through our project proposal are that our report uh, for the th &B public art proposal be received and that the public art proposal project be approved. If approved um, by both the committee and city council, the project will be promoted to the community and submissions will be accepted and reviewed. Um, we hope that the committee finds value in this collaborative community art project, and we really value your feedback for how we can further ensure that this project is an effective approach to combating vandalism and protecting our beautiful and vibrant tra trail network. Um, please let us know if you have any questions, and thank you for your time. Wow. Okay. Uh, we will we'll, before we can proceed, we need a mover and a seconder uh, to uh, that the report to 2022-426 uh, regarding that the whole thing uh, be received, and that the THB uh, public art proposal uh, project be approved. So, can we get a mover for that? Oh, Cheryl. And okay. So. Who was your seconder? Oh, uh, yeah. Councilor Wall. Yeah. Um, so now we'll get into questions. I personally have some, so anyway, we'll, we'll get into, you have your hand up for a reason. Go ahead. Thank you. You're Through welcome. you. Uh, to staff, hi. Uh, thank you. This is an uh, invigorating way to get back to meeting of this committee. So super excited to see this. A uh, couple of questions. First, is there gonna be an emphasis on local artists or any sort of theme to the art? Yes, so the, the submission theme will be the themes that are already included in the public art policy. And so those things that I mentioned before about Brantford's history, culture, locations, events, and people, like those will be kind of the loose themes. So we really want um, community members to be, be able to be creative and to share with us what, say, Brantford's culture and things like that mean to them. So Second as long question. as it's within the public art policy, that's what we'll be accepting. Second question, will there be anything that uh, signifies who the artist was or anything about the artist on site? I think we can encourage um, as part of the submission um, campaign, encourage like artists to sign their pieces. Do you think that we'll be incorporating any sort of like a QR code type thing where people can scan to go to like a artist Instagram or social media page or anything like that? I think we can absolutely look into that. It's a good idea. Um, okay, sorry. You mentioned about keeping the work and protecting it. Is it going to be sealed with any sort of like sealant? Um, I'll have to connect with um, our parks department for exactly how that works. Um, but we're working closely with them to determine how we can best like support the longevity of the art. And, and that includes like what kind of paint we're using and how we pre-treat the panels and anything we do for the panels after. So I can get back to you on the specifics. Awesome. Okay. And I'm uh, sorry. Oh, gotcha. a couple more. I promise. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm taking off my cultural advisory hat committee. 
hat and I'm putting on my heritage hat and notice that nobody reached out to the heritage committee. And I think if they find out about this after the fact, um, they may be upset. I know that bridges don't necessarily fall within the heritage's mandate, it's typically houses, um, but this bridge has historical significance to the city of Brantford, and I would imagine that they may want to provide commentary. Um, there is an upcoming meeting uh, Monday that could fall into the schedule. I'd be more than willing as a member of that committee to do some sort of motion or even a motion to waive the rules just to be able to provide commentary, but I think if they find out about this after the fact, there may be some concern. Has anyone from the Heritage Committee been contacted or even staff from Long Range Planning? To the chair, to you, Councillor Wall, as, as of right now, nobody from Heritage has been contacted. I'll have to touch base with the clerk there to see if something like this would be appropriate to bring forward to the Heritage Committee and how that would work. Um, so that's something I can do and, and get back to you for sure. Okay, please. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Wall. Uh, <laughs> Councillor <Hunt. laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of questions. One, just because I rudely sneezed at the exact same time that you mentioned how many panels there were. How many panels? 112. Okay, that's amazing. Okay. Um, and I see where Councillor Wall is going with, with the sealant. My concern would be the sealant would protect like UV rays and stuff, but it might make it more difficult to fix up topical graffiti on top. So I love that we're reaching out to people. I think that we, by doing this, we are really reducing the opportunity for graffiti, for random graffiti, because there is a there is a um, there's a standard in 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 the graffiti world, and very very generally speaking, um, you know, if their artwork is good, and I think they even say if it's better than mine, we don't touch it, we don't take it. Now you're always going to have the ones that are kind of following those rules and are random. But I think when there's good art there, there's appreciation for it and it is much <coughs> less likely to be um, damaged or vandalized. So I, I love that we're doing this. I love that it's a pilot and I am convinced that this will be the start of many more. Thank you for bringing this forward. All right, are there other questions? Yes, uh, Anna. <coughs> Hi everybody. Um, yeah, I had a couple of questions. Um, I guess, first of all, um, are, was there any consideration to actually pay the artists any fees? I mean, as an art gallery, we're um, big advocates of actually providing fees to artists. You're going to actually increase the quality of the work that's going to be submitted if there is some kind of even nominal fee. Um, it's going to increase the the quality of the art that's going to be submitted and you're going to get a lot more serious artists submitting rather than um i guess you know more novice artists or hobbyists um the other question i had is i, I know we've done a lot of juring for on behalf of the city and i wondered if there was any consideration to that and I'll, I'll tell you why that's a good idea, um, because we're the sort of, I mean, so-called experts <laughs> in the art world. And so when, when we create a jury and when we um, assist with the decisions that go into the selection process, we have a lot more clout to, uh, to back it up. Um, whereas if it's a staff member of the city of Brantford making the selections, you, I, I, I know from experience that, and you, I'm sure you, you guys all know from experience that there tends to be a lot more criticism of what selections are made. And then you have a little bit less clout to say, well, like who, you know, how is staff making decisions about art? What credentials would they have in order to make those decisions? So um, I, I'm just throwing that out there. If there is any interest in having us assist with perhaps the juror and the selection process, we are happy to help as always. Um, and the last thing is, is there any consideration? I, I don't know enough. I mean, I'm sure I've read it a few times, but I haven't recently about the public art, pro, uh, public art um, uh, policy for the city, but I think that there has to be some content, some, some area of it in there in the selection process to include our Indigenous friends and Six Nations because I think that's always an area that's very overlooked and I think that there are a lot of amazing artists in Six Nations that would love to contribute to a project like this. Anna, I have a question for you. Um, the art that was that spread around the city that, the, the, that, uh, that we drive around and look at the pictures and 
you know, has have you had any? Um, has there been much in the way of vandalism to that those pieces at all? There, you know what? We had five amazing years of no vandalism, and in yeah. the last year, we've had I think three vandalized. So something <clears throat> has shifted in the last year. Um, but we had five <clears throat> years with not a single thing, not a mark, not a scratch, nothing. So I think that, I mean, you know, we've obviously got some significant issues in the downtown core that have contributed to that. Um, but yeah, and I can also um, perhaps assist, you know, Laura and uh, Agagan mm -hmm. about the uh, coatings, like we put protective coatings on those that assist with removing graffiti. Um, so it actually protects the artwork. Um, and that was something that I can touch base with you guys on, on with some of the suppliers that we used. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Okay, any other hands going up? Um, oh. And I just wanted to, I, I completely agree with Anna about having some sort of budget for the artists. I think that would be very, very important. But I also just wanted to clarify, you mentioned sort of a campaign element to that budget. Um, that campaign is just to attract artist participants, right, and not to have the public vote in any way on the selection at this point? Yes, just to attract submissions. Okay. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any. Oh, I saw a hand up. No, oh, I guess I didn't. Okay. Well, okay. Going back to our little uh, rules here. Hmm. Uh, so well now, okay, we need to, uh, we've had the discussion. Okay, so we need to uh, call the vote. Okay, um, so all those in favor of the, uh, of the motion and uh, any against? Well, wow, carry, all right. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Okay, that's carried. Now we'll move on to consent items. Um, the Brantford Cultural Advisory Committee, uh, this is today, May, no, no, from, oh, back in May 12th, 2021. And did it, can anybody remember what happened then? <laughs> <laughs> I know I got, I read those, or parts of those minutes, I went, really, that happened? Okay, may I please have a mover and a seconder to adopt the minutes from May 12th, 2021? Lorna is one. Somebody else. I can't see. I can't see you. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I just can't see the name on the bottom. Great. Okay. Um, the print is so small on the bottom of those things. If it weren't for the fact that I already know Lorna so well, <laughs> I would never have known it was her. Um, so we have a mover to seconder, and um, any discussion? Uh, on, the, on those minutes. So all in favor? Everybody in favor? Okay. Any against? No question. Good. That's passed. Um, resolutions. I don't think there's any resolutions. Notices of motion. There are no notices of motion. Wow. I hate to say it. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Mommy, it's over. Okay. Meeting, meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Good to see everyone. It's, Bye. Yeah, it's good to see everybody. Man, yeah, next time we got to all get together and have cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Please make that a part of the record.